Okay, it looks like we are live. I am here today on Christmas Eve, <clears throat> excuse me, with an Akashic Christmas Eve blessing that I wanted to share with you. So the plan is that I will be here for some period of time. I'm not sure how long. It depends on who shows up. And I'll be answering questions. So let me get my camera here because I don't think I can actually see if you talk to me without it. So hopefully some people will notice that I'm here and will join us shortly. So I hope everybody is having a fabulous holiday season. And we'll pop in and share some questions. All right. So it's been a fabulous year here at Akasha Unleashed, and some of you have probably noticed those things. I published my book this year. This is my baby, Akasha Unleashed, The Missing Manual to You. If you don't have your missing manual, run out and get it, because this book is chock full of the lessons that I teach clients every day. This is worth thousands of dollars. That's what's in it. And it will help you to understand yourself at soul level. It will help you to understand what your strengths are so that you can take advantage of them and use them purposefully, consciously in your life to create whatever it is that you want. And that is fabulous. So Karen, hi Karen. I will get to your question in just a moment. I'm so glad I can see your comments here because I'm not seeing them on my phone. Anyway, I think I talked to you last um, New Year's Eve, didn't I? Were you one of those people? I was trying to have a Zoom conference going at the same time, but it doesn't look any like anybody's here on the Zoom, so I will pop back and forth and just keep that going. All right, so, well, Karen, it's just you and me for the moment, so let me take a quick look and see what's going on for this year. So I'm just going to take a moment to ground myself. And when I ground, I have this white column of light that comes down from above into my crown chakra all the way through my body. And when it reaches my heart chakra, it bursts all the way through my body into the earth, miles and miles past the magma, all the way to the center of the earth until I'm firmly grounded between source and mother earth, safe, secure, ready for whatever they have to offer. And then I send my energy field out in a sonic boom five miles all the way to empower the message so that we can get every last ounce from this message. And so now that I'm in this space, I will switch my attention and ask for access to Karen Freebo and her Akashic record. Hmm. I'm seeing a kaleidoscope of colors like prisms flashing, which feels pretty exciting. Sparkly and new. Yes, like a child at Christmas when you get some special present and it delights your heart and excites you. That's what it feels like, this feeling of anticipation of something wonderful to come. Does that make sense, Karen? Okay. So let's see what else comes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm hearing that Christmas song. Let's let's go for a sleigh ride. And there's a party. Yes. Ah. Oh. I can't remember all the words, but you probably know the one I mean. Okay, and so sleigh ride and snow and joy, just that feeling of unfettered joy, it's letting loose, Karen. That's what I'm getting. It's letting loose. You've been holding back, maybe a little bit afraid, 
And what your guides are saying is that now is your time. Now is the time to release that and step forward and trust because they've got you. They've always got you. You don't have to be afraid. And when that inspiration comes to you, listen to it. Act upon it. Don't hesitate. The sooner you act upon it, the sooner they can get busy pulling all of the pieces together so that you can create whatever amazing thing that you want to create. And it feels like, it's almost feeling like you're giving birth, like you're giving birth to some kind of a new idea or project, something really exciting. Does that make sense, Karen? Awesome. Okay. Let's see if anything else comes. Do you need to know more? Let me know that. Is that what you were asking for? Or is there something more specific? Give me a more specific question that I can address. Hi, Dawn. Yes, I am. Um, I'm going to be here for probably an hour, maybe more. depends on how many people show up. And just post your question in the notes. And I'm going to go through them in order. And I'll be answering them along the way. And we'll see what your guides have to say. Yes to the idea and the project. Cool. Did you have a, a follow-up question to that, Karen? And while you're typing, I'm just going to pop over to Zoom, see if anybody is showing up there. No. How odd. Okay. Um, can somebody just let me know, how is the volume? Can you hear me okay? Because I hooked up a new microphone today, and I'm hoping the sound is really good. Okay, so there was no follow-up question then, Karen. That was it. Thank you, Don. Appreciate that. Did you have a question that you wanted to ask, Don? Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. So while we're waiting to see if Don's got a question, let me just share with you. Um, I don't know if you saw earlier when I showed the book. So I'll show you again. This is my book. This is hard to do. Um, it was released in uh, November on Amazon, and it's an international bestseller, and people are loving it. So if you haven't seen the book already, I highly recommend it. It's the missing manual to you, and it's chock full of information about how you can actually access your own Akashic Records. There's a very special meditation that's included, and there is a little access prayer that's a little ritual that is wonderful to use to set your intentions as you go into your Akashic Record. Because truly, we all can access our own records. They belong to us. We can do that anytime we like. It's just nobody showed us how. So this book is your quick start guide to get you going. And it answers a lot of questions like, you know, people sometimes wonder, is it okay to ask God for parking spaces? Yeah, it absolutely is. Because you have this amazing Akashic team that belongs to you and only you, and they're there to help you with anything you need. And if you're not asking them for help, they're twiddling their thumbs. So they delight for you to ask them. And I see, okay, you got it, Dawn. You just, um, oh, Elena, thank you. I'm on the Zoom, and I don't know why it's not letting you. Hang on, Dawn, I will get back to your question in just a sec. I thought it was odd nobody was on Zoom with me. Um, let's see if there's a setting here I'm missing. Nope, I'm not seeing anything there. Well, you know, it's one of those technical things, Elena, but thank you for letting me know. Since we do have people here on Facebook, I'm going to keep going here, and I'll have to apologize to all the people who try to get on Zoom. And what I'll do is I'll schedule another one on Zoom, because maybe there's something with the computer doing both at once. I was trying to do one on my phone and one on my computer, and that wasn't working, and it was 11-11, so I had to get started. So... Dawn, your marriage. Let's see what we can say about that. 
Okay. Oh, before I get there, I, I was just saying that we all can access our records, and they do want you to ask for things, even as small as parking spaces, because they delight in helping you. So the more you ask, the more they can give, and truly the more you interact with them, you get that channel open, and you're going to get more information from them, and it will start to flow. There will be a fluidity that will come, and you'll have more certainty about the messages so that you can trust them. Because there is that time where you're getting messages and you question yourself and you're not sure if it's you or your imagination or your guides. So that takes practice. But we can all do it, and I'll be talking more about that. So let me focus now on Dawn and the marriage. Hmm. So the first thing I get, Dawn, is kind of a murkiness. There's some uncertainty there. There's a lack of clarity. So that kind of feels like um, maybe in this in-between time and, and trying to make some decisions and doubting yourself about what is the right choice to make. And kind of like teeter-tottering on this fence is what it feels like. It's like, do I go this way or do I go that way? And it's scary. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that, that the scary because whichever way you go it's a big commitment either way and it's life-changing and there are others involved in that decision so it has to be made with great care and thought so mm, what it feels like is don't rush take your time work through it carefully thoughtfully consciously and if you need to take a break for a while while you get your head together and you make your decisions that would be wise so the important thing right now is take care of you get to a place where you can get some clarity stop slow down focus ask for guidance don't rush is that helpful Don Elena, yes, animals do have Akashic Records. The thing is, though, that animals and even plants and trees, they all have Akashic Records. Everything with energy has Akashic Records, even places. So, oh, I'm good, Dawn. Let me know if there's a follow-up question. So the thing about the Akashic Records is they're going to be different. Energetically, they will be different for, for animals than they are for people. So when I do an Akashic Record reading with an animal, what I generally do is I go in through the person's record and I ask for information about the animal. And for me, I get more clarity that way. It's a stronger connection. Now, you might find that you can go directly to the animal's Akashic record. So I would play with it if that's something you're interested in exploring because we're all wired differently and we all receive differently. And we have to figure out what our buttons are. And I know when I started doing these readings, I was following the rules that I had been taught. And I learned over time that those rules could change because they didn't feel right to me. Some of them felt constraining. And so I experimented and I tried different things and I tried different access prayers. And I actually learned that depending on the access prayer, you get into a different portal into the records and the portal determines the kind of information you get. For instance, if you're dowsing, you're going to get one kind of information. If you go in through the prayer that I use, you're going to get a different kind. Um, the prayer that Linda Howe uses in her book, I talked about that in mine. I got a very different experience with Linda's prayer than I did with the Mayan prayer that I subsequently found and started using. And now I have my own prayer that I use, and that's a different portal. So let me know if that makes sense and if you have any questions. Is Toro happy? Okay, let me just check in. I'm feeling the very first thing, like you, Dawn, there's a little bit of that wobbling on the fence. But underlying that, there's a feeling in the heart of having purpose and really a deep, soul-satisfying feeling at having purpose because that's important. As you know, Toro's a medicine horse, and 
this is his mission in life to heal people, to reach out and touch people at their soul. And if he could do that all of the time, he would be in heaven. But of course, you know, that's that's not always possible. So as much as possible that he can do that, that you can allow for him to do that, that feeds his soul. And he wants more of that. But he feels cared for. He feels appreciated. He's engaged with. And those are all positive things. And you know Toro, he puts a positive spin on everything. So if there's something else going on, he's not admitting to it. Does that make sense? Oh, that's fa fabulous. He worked with the foster kids last weekend. Oh, gosh. I'm looking forward to seeing those pictures. I'll bet he was in his element. Yeah. Hi, Jill. Thanks for joining us. Please do ask questions if you have them. And the questions are scrolling by, everybody. I see that there are a number of people here that aren't commenting. So if you posted a question earlier and I missed it, post it again because they're scrolling by. And with my eyes closed when I'm answering questions, I might miss them. Okay? Okay. Medicine Bear and Bear Heart have come back. How can you make their return less stressful? What are Medicine Bear? Are they cats? Dogs? Give me a clue what they are, and that'll help me to connect. So I'm delighted you're all here on Christmas Eve, because I'm sure you had a lot of wonderful things to be doing. And it's, it's just fabulous to have you here. It's such a blessing for my heart to share this love and whatever messages come from your guides to you, because that's what it's all about. They're cats. Okay, thank you. Okay, so medicine bear and bear heart. What can you do to make the return less stressful? Okay. Oh, gosh, I immediately see, like, bodies running around and crashing and, and glass breaking. So there's this energy, this kind of an anxiety and a restlessness, and oh, what is the rest of it? It's, it's a real hyper kind of energy that's coming from them. And it's like some, it, I'm getting a picture of like somebody holding a cat by the tail and spinning them around. It's, there's that kind of a feeling, that frenetic feeling, and they're wanting more peace. They came to you for peace because they remember you as somebody that has this deep well of peace within. And for some reason, they're not feeling that from you right now. And that's what they're objecting to. And they're saying, where is the Elena that we knew? That's what we're looking for. Does that make sense? Dawn, the book is on Amazon. There's a Kindle and there's a paperback. And if you get the paperback, since you're a neighbor, I can sign it for you if you'd like. But there, there are both versions on Amazon. So, Elena, I'm waiting for you to type and let me know if that made any sense. And where do we go from here? <laughs> Thank you, Don. It makes sense. Okay, did you have a follow-up question to that? Is that enough of an answer for you to know what to do to help them? I suspect as you shift, Elena, and you start working on your book and you're digging out, there's going to be some discomfort for them because that brings with it a lot of dissonant energy. And you're going to be purging as you write that book. So that is going to help them. Is it possible that while you're going through that process that's going to be uncomfortable for them, that they could maybe stay with a friend until you're in a better place for them? Maybe that's an option. I don't know. And it feels like they've come back now because they want to help you with this project. It's been in hibernation far too long, and it's time for this baby to get birthed. And so it's like they're an impetus to give you that nudge to help you get moving, to remind you that you have a greater purpose. 
And it's not a greater purpose in the respect that you have to do or you must or you should do. It's a greater purpose in that it's what feeds your soul. And it's what you need for your own fulfillment. And then by virtue of your fulfilling your soul, that will go out into the world and bless others. So it's not an obligation. I don't want you to think that it's an obligation. It's something that will bring you tremendous joy and fulfillment. Okay. Yeah, I, I think they feel like they're wanting to leave because of that frenetic energy. But they can be the catalyst to help you move through. And perhaps maybe they'll actually persuade you to move quicker. Because if you get cracking on that book and you get through that purging and are at a place of more peace, then they'll be able to calm down too. So it's almost like they're your totems right now and they're reminding you to get moving. They're, they're bringing that sense of urgency with them. But for their peace, if you can let them stay with somebody else for a short while, that might be a good thing. Because you did say that you're ready to buckle down and get that project done. So perhaps there's a balance there that's missing. And that would be a way that you could bring that. David just went out and it got really cold in here. So... Yeah, so what do you think about that? Just going to see if I can, ah, I can scroll a little bit. See if I missed anybody. Okay, now I think I got you all. So if there's anybody else who has shown up and has a question they would like to ask of their Akashic Guides, please post in the comments because I'm going to be here for a little while answering questions. Makes sense? Awesome. I'm so glad. Yeah, because there's there's that that feeling of upheaval is is what it is. And it's a little hard to make your way through. It's like, you know, you're you're clawing your way through and trying to get clarity. And there's so much going on that it, it kind of puts a little static in the brain and it makes it hard to focus. So while they wanted to help get you moving, if they're preventing you now from doing that moving, then it's just an adjustment that needs to be made to allow you. Can you be sure you close the door tight when you leave, dear? Because I don't want it to pop open after you go. Thank you. Okay, he's just going out for his run. Oh, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. Rachel, hi. It's so great to see you here. If you have a question, just go ahead and post. So, Elena, have you started? Have you gotten any further with the book? You were working with the recordings. Have you made another big step? Because it feels like that's important for you to do before we jump into 2018. Just for yourself, because that will anchor you if you make some kind of a big jump into it and get a chunk of it behind you. So that will anchor you and help you as you go forward with stability and to keep going. Yes, me too. You probably tried to get on the Zoom and, and were unsuccessful. Something technically happened and it's the Zoom isn't going on for some reason. So I'll have to send a message out to everybody. Let them know. It's really a bummer because I have no idea of, no idea how many people actually try to get on and were disappointed. That sucks. But we're here, so we're gonna focus on the good stuff. And I'm I'm delighted you're here. Uh, Jill, I saw you were there a little bit ago. If you had a question, please feel free, pop in. Oh, I'm so delighted to hear that. And you know, that's going to keep happening because you've got so many of them. You may end up writing two books by the time you're done because you've just got so much that's been bottled up and needs to be shared. You know, um, hi, Laura. So glad to have you here. I'll get to you in a second. Um, one of the messages I got a while back, Elena, I'll share with you, is that when the whole um, Dakota Access debacle was in, you know, high gear, I went to my guides and I asked them, why would somebody choose to incarnate as a Native American? Because they have to know there's a lot of hell that's ahead of them. Their lives are going to be very difficult. And I don't understand choosing that. And what they explained to me is, first of all, do not feel sorry for them because you're disempowering them. They chose 
chose that particular life because they had some old karma they needed to work out. And that was the best way for them to do it. And who am I to judge that choice? And so just like those people, Elena, you chose to incarnate into that environment with grand plans of what you were going to do to not only deal with old karma, but also to create some lovely new karma in this lifetime. And like me, you're a late bloomer. You're really just getting started. And oh my gosh, there's such a trajectory in front of you. So get going, girl. You have a lot to do. And we are all here waiting to hear your words because they're beautiful and they're sacred. And we need to hear them. Oh, you're building a barn and a riding ring. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Well, you know, Dawn, it doesn't have to be for free because there's this principle of fair exchange of energy. So even if it's donations, if people give something in return for what they're getting, that actually empowers them and that allows them to get the fullness of what you're sharing. Because when we share our gifts with people, and that includes Toro, there's this energetic feedback loop, right? You're putting it out. Toro's putting it out. And if they're not getting that energetic feedback loop from the other person or persons, it's not complete and it's not as full as it could be. So just think about that and keep that in mind. And that's for all light workers because we need to have that feedback loop going so that we get the fullness and the other person or persons get the fullness. It's really important. Um, you'll have to clarify. I'm not sure what you mean about horse feed. If you're, are you meaning, is he getting the right feed? Let me know. Meanwhile, Laura, I'm going to pop back to your question. And is, do you pronounce your name Dominguez? Just let me know. I want to be sure I'm saying it right. Oh, feed in exchange for his services. Sure. That could be. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Go with your intuition on that. If that feels like it's the right thing and you're getting the results, then fabulous. Do that. That could be a way that he earns his keep, which is really wonderful. Okay, thanks, Laura. So I'm just going to focus now on Laura's question, and then I'll come back to Rachel. So, Laura, advice for 2018. Take me just a minute to connect with your records, Laura. I'm seeing this big orange ball, and it's almost like I'm holding the sun in my hands. It's just, it's, oh wow, it's just crackling with energy, and surging, and swirling. And it's like a crystal ball for you, Laura. How interesting. So it's got all this stuff swirling around in it, but very orangey. I don't know if orange means anything to you. If that color doesn't mean anything to you, then it's probably something to do with your sacral chakra. So if you're feeling blocked with money or with relationships, and sacral is about sex too, um, any of those things, creation, that could be what it's referring to, or it could just be that orange is meaningful to you. So this big orange swirling ball. And... It's, it's meant to be a crystal ball, and yet I'm not getting clarity because of all the swirling. So there's doubts, right? There's a lot of doubts swirling around in there. Insecurities and uncertainty. Seeking. I'm feeling all of that swirling around in that ball. And then I see you stepping forward with your hands like you're going to part the curtain. And you're pulling the curtain ever so slowly open. And the light's coming in. So this is about you asking your guides for help. Yeah. And so you're opening that curtain and the white light's coming in and now it's like the that cool white light of the moon and it's pure and it's beautiful. And it's coming in and it's lighting up your body and you can feel that coolness and it's it's a beautiful feeling that's permeating your being and it's it's giving you a little more confidence and a little more surety and it's soothing you. So it's like your guides putting their hands on your forehead and smoothing it and saying, Laura, it's okay. Relax. Allow the message to come through. 
because what's happening is you're getting caught up in that swirling ball of uncertainty and doubt and you're blocking their messages so they want you to meditate if you do spend some time calmly with them just be with your guides don't expect anything just be in that place right just be in a receiving mode and take whatever comes and know that in the beginning what comes may be very slow it may just be a trickle whatever it is celebrate because in the celebrating and in the joyful feeling of that small amount coming through you open the door wider and pretty soon it's just going to flow in but if we don't celebrate even the small blessings then we close the door on the larger blessings so celebrate all of those small little steps and more will come let me know if that makes sense and if you have a follow-up Oh my gosh, <laughs> a crystal ball, Laura, that is too funny. So did the message make sense then? And let me know if there's a follow-up. I'm going to scroll back up. We had a question from Rachel <clears throat> about your work in the next year. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you live too. We will get on Zoom and we will see you. Okay, so let me just ask. Well, the first thing they say is, will it happen next year? I don't know, Rachel, will it? Do you want it to happen next year? Because remember, it's all about your choices. This is free choice for all of us. Our guides do not make choices for us. They give us opportunities. They throw the breadcrumbs in our path. But it's always up to us what choice we make. And then if we don't like the consequences, make a new choice. So let me just focus on Rachel for a moment and see what they have to say. Hmm. I'm feeling a little bit of staticky, like radio static in the brain. So there's a lack of clarity and a little uncertainty, like Laura was feeling. But it's not as bad as it could be. I've I've had some where it's like such total static, you can't focus on anything. So yours maybe was there and it's clearing now. So you're on the way to tuning the frequency. That's what they want you to know. They've seen the work that you've done. They want to acknowledge it. And they're saying, yes, Rachel, you're on the right path. Keep going. And as you go down that path, just keep your eyes open for signs from your guides. And the ones that you see that are delightful, try them. See how they feel. It's like picking a ripe peach and taking a taste of it. And if it's good, have the whole peach. If it's not, throw it away. Let the animals have it. Let it recycle. Somebody else may enjoy that peach. It wasn't for you, but you didn't know until you tried it. So that's what your journey is going to be like. You're moving forward. You're testing to see if it's good for you, if you like it, if you do keep going. If you don't, change course. But do it immediately. Don't hesitate. Because the longer we stay on a path that doesn't serve us, the more unhappy and out of energetic alignment we get. And that does not serve our soul. So always keep looking for what feeds your soul. Do that and do that and do that. Don't waste time dancing with energies and people and situations that don't feed your soul. Let me know if that makes sense. Hi, Jacob. Thank you. If you have a question, be sure and post it. Lucas, a shout out to Uncle Mike. Okay. Uncle Mike Hunt. I'm going to send some energy to Uncle Mike Hunt from your guides and me and you. How does that sound? So we're just sending a massive burst to Uncle Mike. <sighs> yeah. And he will feel that. Awesome. Okay. Hi, Kayla. Thank you for being here. New from Canada. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And if you have a question, please post. We've got time. 
Douglas blessings thank you and to you as well I appreciate that and if you're celebrating everybody Merry Christmas uh, following the breadcrumbs it's always about following the breadcrumbs Rachel for all of us and the more we do it the better we get at it and the faster it happens and the juicier the breadcrumbs really because in the beginning it's hard for us to see them and I don't know if you've gotten to that chapter in the book but there's a whole chapter about how do we get the messages from our guides and so that's a big learning journey because nobody teaches that I think we should learn that in grammar school because we need it it's a life skill right but once we start learning how to do it and we open up our senses and our eyes and our energy to messages from the guides then more and more comes in because they are right there just oh desiring to help us in any way they can I mean they're dancing and they're doing jumping jacks and cartwheels and somersaults and anything they can do to get our attention so it delights them when they finally do get our attention and then we follow up on it so we have this this lovely relationship with our guides we just need to engage with them more absolutely to feed your soul because that's what it's all about Rachel if you're doing something that doesn't feed your soul you're cheating yourself and I can tell you because of this journey that I've been on the past number of years um, in the fifth dimension with the Akashic guides it has shifted me in a way that I didn't even think was possible because you get more clarity and you get confidence and you get this surety in your your being your soul your heart that you you just know and you keep going you know the answers will be there when you need them and it just I don't know it's a feeling of Zen peace bliss you know most days I'm just blissed out and don't get me wrong that doesn't mean my life is perfect because we're living a human experience there are things that are going to go wrong and we're all going to have bad days and you know we're going to have financial woes and we're going to have physical woes and you name it sky's the limit right it just means that when those things happen they don't rock your boat as much as they once did you are able to handle it better and get back to that place of peace and bliss and Zen much more quickly so that's why you want to do it it's for your own good it, it just enriches your life experience to an incredible degree it's hard to even explain how wonderful it is uh, um, if you're into homeopathics Rachel send me an email because I actually have a tincture that I made uh, I call it stop cold and I take it any time those first cold symptoms start and it knocks it right out it's fabulous and I can send you the recipe so that you can make that yes you have to find time to get through my book because you need it and if you can do it before the beginning of the year that would be awesome because you'll start the new year in a different place you will shift after you learn all of this information and I believe you may want to dabble a little bit with the Akashic Records and just see if that feeds your soul it may not it may be there's some other energetic kind of work that you want to do but at your soul you're a light worker so it's just a matter of you finding the shoes that fit and then that will be the path and the cool thing is Rachel you start down that path and it feels wonderful perhaps and you go for a while and maybe after a while it doesn't feel so wonderful and you change course and that's perfectly fine none of us is stuck doing the thing that made us happy yesterday it's all about today being in the now being present being aware of what feeds our soul and doing more of that and understand this isn't about being selfish this is about you first take care of you so that out of that abundance of wonder and bliss and love you can take care of others um, for those of you who are familiar with the Christian Bible what does it say love thy neighbor as thyself now what got lost in that translation is the focus was all on the neighbor the thing is you can't love your neighbor if you don't first love yourself and that was the message that the authors of the Bible were trying to get across to us and in fact many other religions have that same message because it's universal truth so first focus on loving you just like when you're on the airplane the oxygen mask comes down if you don't put it on yourself first self-care you'll be dead 
you won't be able to help anybody else, right? This is the most selfless thing you can do to take care of you first and then from that abundant place take care of others and you know what will happen your heart will just grow and spring open with so much love this is something that I found that was kind of astonishing to me because people that I didn't particularly care for perhaps in the past I just feel such love and peace for them now all of that other stuff doesn't matter anymore because I'm in this place where I love me and I didn't used to love me and that's also a revelation so that's what I want for all of you. If you can take that blessing into the new year, start learning to love yourself so that you will have more to give others. Because you know, as they say, you can't give from an empty vessel. So you first fill yourself up with divine love and energy. And then from that abundance, you share it with the world and you bless everybody in the process. And that's what it's about. That's our journey, right? Love, peace, blessings, wonder and delight. That's what your journey should be about. And that's a perfect thing for us to focus on as we go into Christmas and we go into the new year and the celebrations and the choices of what we're going to bring to the new year. Laura. Okay, you wonder if you're done learning the lesson and the boyfriend feels like karmic. Um, usually, Laura, if it feels like a karmic relationship, it is. That doesn't mean that it's twin flame soulmate, the only one for you. I actually made a video about that. If you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find it. And I explained there that there are many souls that could be your twin flame. We're not limited to just one because if we were, most of us probably would never find them. So there are many souls that we have had past experiences with, and we can choose to have another experience with them in this lifetime. It's up to us. So that feeling of, a, you know, unfinished business, absolutely, that's valid. If you feel it, honor it. Doesn't mean you have to stay with that person. If it's a relationship that's working for you, fabulous. Only you can decide if you've learned that lesson. Um, let me just take a quick look in your record and see if they have anything to say about that. Maybe we'll get a glimpse about what the lesson is. So Laura Dominguez. Hmm. Karmic relationship. Yeah, I'm getting you were definitely married in a past experience. Oh, and this is interesting. It's a feeling of a very warm, loving relationship. It's a feeling of happiness. I'm not feeling any, any kind of static or negativity at the moment. So what they're choosing to show me, because you know when, when we see the, the, the past life information, we only get what we need at that moment in time. We don't get the whole big you know, blow by blow of the lifetime. So it was important for you to know that you did have a warm, loving relationship with this person in the past. And it just, I feel your heart just full of love and so warm. And I feel children. And it's like a scene of you're all gathered around a Christmas tree and you're having this warm, loving memory together. So that's what's coming through. Let me know if there was anything else you wanted me to look for. Yes, Rachel, I, I got that, that you were, you were getting it from your friend. And perhaps she has come into your life and across your path to demonstrate for you that that's what's possible because you've had such upheaval and a challenge this year. It, it's been very draining. So this is time for you to focus on you. Recharge your batteries because you're not going to be much good to your kids or your friends or anybody else if you don't take care of you fill your vessel right fill it full to overflowing that's fine I often tell people in person that you know when we're in energetic alignment with our gifts it's like we're standing straight right where here we are and source is pouring this lovely energy down through our body and feeding our soul and lighting us up with love and blessings 
and we're energized. It's like our battery's fully charged, right? But then when we get out of energetic alignment with our gifts, it's like, you know, we're cockeyed. And so this lovely energy is coming down, but it's spilling all over the place. And we're only getting a small measure because we're out of energetic alignment. Or another um, analogy would be, think of yourself as a gymnast on a balance beam. When you're in energetic alignment, you can run on the balance beam. You can skip, you can hop, you can jump up and down. And you don't fall because you're in alignment, right? You're balanced. But when you're out of alignment with your gifts, that's when you're teetering to the side and, you know, you're in danger of falling off. So it's all about understanding yourself at soul level, honoring who you are at soul level, and getting into alignment with those gifts. And that's a big part of what I help people do. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. So I'm going to pause just a moment for a small commercial. You knew I would, right? So I'm going to be offering a course starting in the middle of January. And it's going to be a course to help you make the most of your new year. We're going to come together in a group. We're going to talk about what your gifts are. We're going to talk about how your soul is wired. And use the obstacles that you're facing in contrast with your gifts to help you understand how you can supercharge your life and start making your dreams come true in 2018. And that class is only going to be $77, which is a fabulous bargain. We're going to meet for four weeks, once a week, and we'll be uh, on Zoom or phone, whichever works for you. Elena has just been in that class with me um, that we did to start ahead of the new year and it exceeded my wildest expectations and so I knew I had to put it together into a more formal format and do it again so I will be sending information about that if you want to know more about it send me an email put me a comment here and I'll get you that information and I'll also be posting more about it Oh, thank you for that validation, Rachel. I appreciate that. Because, you know, honestly and truly, I'll share this with you. Those of us who do this kind of work, we're sharing from our heart. We're sharing the absolute best that we can, right? We're giving of ourselves 100%. But we also have doubts at times. And we don't know whether what we've delivered to you is meaningful or even accurate unless you validate for us because hey we are vessels we're facilitating and we're translating and you know sometimes we get it wrong so it's up to you to let us know where we're a little bit wrong so that we can get it right and when you validate for me that it's right then that feeds my soul that completes that energetic loop between us and you're letting me know that the message was delivered and it was accurate, and it was a blessing to you, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, a little froggy this morning. Actually, it's afternoon now. We've surpassed noon. I'm so glad you understand about the standing straight, Rachel. That will serve you well. Keep that in mind, because when you tune in to your energy, and you notice that you're a little bit off kilter, that's the time to stop. Go meditate. Go ask for guidance. Figure out what you need to tweak. And often it's just a small tweak. It's not major, right? As long as we keep doing the tweaking along the way and we don't let it all build up into something massive. So that's what you need to do. And Rachel, just know that your guides are sending you so much love and healing energy so that you can step into the new year and leave behind the pain and the dissonance that you've been experiencing because you know they are crying out to you they want to bring that to you and you haven't been allowing it to come in for some reason you were feeling like I don't know you were honoring somebody else by going through that pain and kind of rolling around in it and torturing yourself a little bit because really when we stay in that place of suffering that's self-torture, and we're choosing to do that. Because when those negative thoughts come in and they make us feel bad, we have a choice. 
we can replace those negative thoughts with positive ones and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until the negative thoughts don't come anymore. So that's what your guides would like you to do. Put those negative, unhappy thoughts away. They don't serve you. All they do is drag you down into that dark place, and that doesn't feed your soul. I hope that makes sense. I will send you the information on the course, Rachel. Thank you. Um, Elena, you said mine too. I'm sorry, I'm not getting that connection because the comments have scrolled by. So if you want to elaborate, that would be great. Uh, Laura, you don't have to be there live. You can still benefit from the class because it will be recorded. And we also have a Facebook group where we will be interacting between classes to help you get even more out of the experience. And with this group that we're, we're just now wrapping up, there's been such an amazing sharing. Oh my gosh, it blesses my heart to see it. The people have blossomed and they're using their gifts in a more purposeful way and they're blooming and oh, it's just, it's a delight. There was one lady who came who at the beginning had heaviness about her and confusion about her path. And the last time we met, I swear I thought she was gonna levitate. She was just beaming. And it was so miraculous. And that was only after three meetings. So this course is just, it's energetically attuned from the guides because that's where I got it from. And I'm sharing it with you and facilitating to help you use the lessons from the guides in your lives to help you open up and blossom. Because really there is so much out there waiting for you. And if you don't start now, when are you going to start? You know, you deserve it. So absolutely, if you can't be there live, don't let that stop you. Please sign up because you will bloom when you get all this information and you understand yourself at this deep level. Okay. Yes, Rachel, there's patterns for all of us. That's very true. And so part of what we do in reading the Akashic Records is we help people figure out what was the source of that pattern. And once we understand the source, what was the choice, what was the story, then we can clear it and move forward, and it's not a problem anymore. And, of course, then there's more that you get to work on because there are layers and layers of healing. And so what we're about is we're constantly healing those layers and moving forward. Okay, Laura, if you want to um, PM me your email address, and I'll send you the details. Oh, thank you, Elena, that it met your expectations. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it's been a delight having you. I'm, I'm so blessed and grateful that you joined us. And to watch you now step forward and birth your baby. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait. And I want to be on the list to, you know, proofread if, if you need help with that because I'm actually a really good proofreader. So that's something I can help with a lot. Oh, you think that there was a pattern of not allowing healing. It's quite possible, Rachel. Let me take a look and see what I get. Um, no, you never need to suffer, of course. And I hope you're getting that now. Um, yeah, there probably was. The way you described it, there had to have been a contract with him. And that's why you had that attachment. But um, you were just a little bit off on what that contract was all about. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, let me know if there was another question there, because it sounds like maybe you got your answer already. But yeah, there was a contract, and that's why you felt that strong pull, and it just sucked you in. And it was a pattern, yeah, I'm getting, it was definitely a pattern that you have done before with that same soul. So there's been this pattern of dragging each other down. So there was something good that happened, and then it went awry, and then like an anchor, holding the other one back. And so now it's time to acknowledge that that was there, to cut the cord or, you know, release the anchor. How, whatever your vernacular is, doesn't matter. It's just the idea of releasing it. And the thing is, you can do a meditation. I think this would be really good for you. In your meditation, I'd like you to see the two of you 
hooked together by a rope or an anchor, you know, whatever kind of uh, connection. And I'd like you to lovingly say goodbye to each other and cut the cord or release the anchor and agree together that you have fulfilled the contract. It's done. You don't need to do it again. And so when your souls cross paths again, it'll be a very different experience. Let me know if that makes sense and if that's something you think you can do. Awesome. I would love to do that, Elena. Perfect. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Because I'm at the end of the questions here. Oh, perfect, Rachel. Yeah. And if you don't have a meditation to do that, the one that's the bonus with the book, download that one. That's um, a specially energetically charged meditation from Metatron. And I think that might really serve you to use that meditation, to let that just clear. Because it's, it's to reset your soul to default, which is perfect, right? The default settings were the perfect before we picked up all of the stuff that led us astray and, you know, twisted our ideas and perceptions and brought so much unhappiness. Perfect. Yeah. Do that one the sooner the better because you may need to do it more than once. And if you can do that and start to allow that to permeate your soul, just allow, allow, allow. That, that's your word for the year, Rachel. Allow. You need to do more allowing. Let the love and the healing come in and fill you up and bless you so that you can, in the next 12 months, get on your journey because you are a light worker and you've got important things to do. And in that, you will find what feeds your soul. And it may take a little tweaking, and that's okay. It's a journey, remember? I was telling somebody in our, our private Facebook group that if you listen to Abraham, Abraham's always talking about how it's a journey. As long as you're here, you're never going to get it done because when it's done, you croak. And that's Abraham's flip way of saying you die. So as long as you're here and breathing and living, it's never done because it's a journey. The destination is the end. Probably you knew that, but I just figured I'd add it a little bit too. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. I really appreciate it. You have a blessed day. If you're celebrating, Merry Christmas, and we'll talk soon. Mike, I am so glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. If you tried to get on the Zoom, it didn't work. There was a technical problem. Maybe it conflicts with the Facebook. I don't know, but I'll have to apologize to all my Zoom people. <clears throat> Let me just get a little drink here, and then I'll take a look at your question. Anybody else who has questions, pop them in here. This is your chance. You've got my undivided attention. Okay, so, pardon me. <clears throat> Mike, is the focus of your writing shifting? Let's see what they have to say. <clears throat> and it's Raphael that you work with, right? Are you open to working with, with others, with other angels? I don't know if that just came through. Because it feels to me, I'm getting this feeling of expansion, Mike. And Raphael had a lot to share. But it's from Raphael's perspective. And if you're willing to open up and get some other perspectives, yes, your writing will shift. Let me know if that makes sense. That's, that's just what I got. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So... I don't know if you already know who the others are. And they may not be archangels either, Mike. They could be guides from your records. So just be open to whoever, whatever. Because I have a green dragon that comes to me sometimes. They can come in all shapes and forms. And sometimes it will be like the same personality, but in a different form. And they do that, they've explained to me, sometimes for their amusement and sometimes for my amusement. It just depends. I had one that came in the shape of a dwarf, and then she morphed into 
and ogre and it was all part of delivering the message and it made sense in the context of the message so if we're open to whatever comes they will bring us even more joy and delight because often these messages that come through are are just like watching movies and their their fantasy and their um, you know like Disney characters sometimes and cartoon characters it's whatever they can use from our frame of reference to get the message across and when I'm relaying the messages to other people it will be something that makes sense from their frame of reference so I was reading for this lady one time and I went in and it was like darkness everywhere which is very unusual because the records are normally light and as I wandered around in the darkness wondering what this is all about I fell down the rabbit hole in the tree into Alice in Wonderland and wandered through Alice in Wonderland for a while until I came out the other side and there was this town and there was this big parade being given in, in this person's honor and then there was a journey on a train there was a train waiting at the station to take them on the next stage of the journey and when I got the feedback from that it turns out this person has been battling depression and has a great many dark nights of the soul and so her guides brought the message in that format to validate for her because you know most people when they get a reading they're skeptical they don't know if they can trust the information and so there's always some kind of validation to let you know that yes this is truth and you can trust it so in that case that darkness in the beginning was the validation and then the journey out of it into the light and into a celebration you know a parade being given in your honor um, and then taking a journey on the train that was encouragement and hope for the future that there was more brightness ahead and the darkness didn't have to be the reality forever oh thanks Mike <laughs> that's funny let me know if you have more questions about that Elena a draw to move back west I don't know when you told me about moving from the desert that just struck me as why because it your energy when you talk about the desert just feels so right so if you're feeling pulled back then go and you know it may not be forever it may be for a short term maybe there's something you need to do there and that's why you need to go back but you won't know till you get there and that's why the idea of the RV is so cool because you get to go test you can test this place and that place and I don't know I get this thing like you might end up just being this nomad where you take your bright light and your healing energy from place to place you know like in the days of old with the the traveling healers that went from town to town and blessed people with their gifts that could be you but that's only if that brings joy and delight to your soul and you won't know till you try but yeah I would say honor that you're being pulled that direction for a reason there's something about it that you need to do for yourself not for others now again because remember all of this that comes through is not about putting an obligation on any of us it's about giving us more options so that we can make better choices that serve us okay I don't see any more comments anybody else have a question that they want to pop in real quick I've got a little more time if you have questions. Okay, well, I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions. I'll just tell you one more time. Um, oh, gosh, where did I put it? Here it is. If you haven't already gotten my book, you need this book. It's the missing manual to you, which is what the Akashic Records are. And this book was divinely inspired. It's contains the lessons that my guides have been teaching me for the past number of years and they put it on my heart and my spirit that I needed to write this down because what's in this book is what I find myself telling people all the time these are the lessons that 
we all need to understand about ourselves so that we can create these magnificent lives because that's what we're all here for to have more joy and wonder and delight to have this amazing experience so that the next time around it can be even better you know we didn't come here to get caught in Sturm and Drang so let's figure that stuff out and get rid of it and move on to the fun part of the journey so that's what the book is about it's a quick start guide to reading your own Akashic records because the Akasha is all about empowering us and if you have a desire to learn to read your own records then you absolutely should pursue that so there's a bonus special meditation and there is a special access prayer you need to download those so find the link and download them and try them play around with getting into your records and just go easy on yourself and take whatever comes with no expectations allow it to unfold and when you relax into it more will come it's a journey remember so go with that feeling of anticipation and excitement and just allow whatever to unfold and I'm here if you need guidance that's my role so beyond that if you weren't here earlier to hear when I mentioned about the course that I'm offering it's going to start the middle of January I don't have the exact date yet but I will be getting that to you soon it's going to be a four-week course and it's going to be something that will help you jump forward into the new year with a clarity of purpose and intention so that you can get started creating the magnificent life that your soul has been yearning for so we're going to talk about what your gifts are we're going to talk about them in great detail because understanding what your gift is and how to use it in the context of your manifesting and you're creating this amazing life that will open up so many possibilities and so much more understanding I'm still learning about mine it's it's a journey right we're always learning so we will help you as a group get a better handle on who you are how you are and the best way that you can use your gift to create whatever you want in your life and you will just be amazed at the things that come forward and the energetic shift that you will experience as we go through this journey because when you awaken to who you are at soul level you will never see yourself the same way again you will have a deeper appreciation for who you are which will then magnify your efforts because you will be coming from this place of a greater perspective and you'll have more to offer to the world because remember taking care of you first is the most selfless thing you can do and out of the abundance and the joy that comes from doing that you will serve the world thank you Elena bless you and Merry Christmas to you Mwah. I have so loved having you in my group and I can't wait to be a part of your journey yes Mike I'll be emailing that out to everybody very soon I was just inspired last week to do it so I'm still putting all the details together one of the things I've learned about my gift and Elena if you're still listening this applies to you too is that the way I'm wired I have to gather all this information and carefully analyze it which means I kind of plod along sometimes and do things in a slower manner than I might prefer so I'm a late bloomer and I've always known I was a late bloomer but I didn't understand why and now I get it it's part of the way I'm wired so now that I understand that I'm actually working to speed that up a little bit because what will happen is is I'll get these grand inspirations and I'll sometimes get them at the last minute where I don't have time to properly implement them just like what we're doing right now my plan was to do this on zoom and Facebook together and I only got the inspiration to do this like a day ago and I was away all day yesterday and late into the night so I didn't have time to test to be sure that I actually could do both at the same time so I get this like I say these grand inspirations at the last minute because I've been so um, caught up in gathering the wisdom and analyzing it and not being ready to put it into action so what my guides are working on me really hard right now and it's a little uncomfortable is to speed that process up so it's it's part of the journey it's part of what I'm learning and I'm sharing it with you because you may have the same issue who knows 
Thank you, Laura. I can't wait to meet you. It will be wonderful. I appreciate that. So anybody else? Don't be shy. If you got a question, now is your chance. I'm here. Ask away. Your guides are on call. They're all waiting. And maybe you're just slow typist, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes. But if we don't have any more questions, then we'll end, and, and I'll send you on your way to enjoy your Christmas Eve in whatever way it delights your soul to do. Okay. Well, this video will be on the page, so you can always revisit it. And what I'll do, since we didn't have the Zoom, I'll send this video link out to all of the people who were invited to the Zoom session, so they'll at least be able to see the uh, Q&A portion. Awesome. All right. Well, my dogs have been remarkably quiet and allowed us to have this time together, and that probably won't go on for much longer, so it's probably a good time to end up. Thank you all for coming. You have blessed me by being here. I really appreciate it. Much love to you. Enjoy the holiday, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone.